man. It has been, it has been a big week. It's been a big week in the world of professional wrestling. It has been a big week in the world of the WWE. It has been a big week in the world of the rock, in the world of the people's champion, in the world of the great one, and in the world of the most electrifying man walking God's green earth, daddy. It has been that kind of week. And to quote the legend, one of the rock's heroes, what's cause in all of this? <laughs> it's been that kind of exciting week. Pro wrestling is exciting once again. It's been decades. Pro wrestling is cool once again. It's been decades. Pro wrestling is undeniably exciting once again. It's unpredictable, it's disruptive because of one man, and that is The Rock, because The Rock came into pro wrestling came back to pro wrestling, a business that The Rock loves, an industry that The Rock was born into, took professional wrestling, turned it on its head, disrupted the shit out of it, and it will never ever be the same again. And it feels good. It feels so damn good. And whether you like The Rock or you don't like The Rock, it doesn't matter because it feels good. Pro wrestling is back on top. And it feels good. It feels good. But you know what? You know what? Here's the thing. You know what doesn't feel good? Well, The Rock will tell you what doesn't feel good. What doesn't feel good is all the bullshit that The Rock has got to deal with. All the bullshit that the people's champion has got to deal with. All the Cody crybabies out there still running their mouths that The Rock has got to deal with. All the jabronis in the locker room still running their mealy mouths that The Rock has still got to deal with. Cody cry babies. <laughs> Take a look. You know who is my favorite wrestler right now? It's Cody Rhodes. Do you know who I hate and I fucking despise in this moment? It's Dwayne Johnson, member of the board of directors of TKO. I hate that man right now in this moment. Not as a person, right now. obviously, but as, a, as a, a wrestling fan watching the product. The person I want to boo, the person I hate the most, is Dwayne Johnson, board of directors of the WWE and TKO. That's who I am angry at right now. Because I am looking at the board of director that came in, used his power to take this opportunity away from Cody and put himself in the main event at WrestleMania 40. That's how I look at it right now. So you see, this is the level of absurdity and bullshit that The Rock has got to deal with. The Rock doesn't know who that guy is, but he knows what he is, and that's a goof, an idiot, another pro wrestling Cody crybaby jack-off idiot who thinks he knows everything but doesn't know shit. The guy is sitting in his basement with a bathrobe and a Cody Rhodes t-shirt on. And he's talking about how much he hates The Rock. You don't give that guy a podcast, you give him a straight jacket. How much he hates The Rock. I just, you hate The Rock, you hate The Rock. <laughs> it has nothing to do with the board the Rock will get to that in a second. It has everything to do with common sense, you idiot, you goof, and to all the Cody crybabies who are grown-ass men who think you know it all when you don't know shit. You listen up to The Rock right now. It has nothing to do with the board. It has nothing to do with the fact that The Rock owns everything as it relates to The Rock, the people's champion, full ownership, which means The Rock is the boss. It has nothing to do with that. It has to do with common sense. Let the rock drop some gospel on you. Here's the common sense. When Roman Reigns, years ago, dropped the words, head of the table. Those words were specifically and solely set up and created. So one day, Roman Reigns, the champion 
of the WWE would come face to face with his cousin, The Rock, the people's champion, and together, combined, they will make the biggest WrestleMania of all time. The biggest match of all time. The biggest match in the history of professional wrestling. When Roman Reigns said those words, that's why he said it. Because that is Roman Reigns' story. That is The Rock's story. At one time, that was Cody Rhodes' story, but it was last year. And what happened last year at WrestleMania? What's the, what's the, uh, what's the technical term? It's, oh, he shit the bed. That's what happened. And then The Rock comes back on January 1st of this year. It's a big year. You know it and The Rock knows it. It's an exciting year. You can feel it in the air. You can feel the mana. 2024, we're going to kick it off the right way. The Rock goes out there in front of that crowd in San Diego, California, and said exactly what he promised he was going to say because we had an agreement. And that agreement was The Rock was going to go out there and he was going to test the waters. And he was going to see how the crowd reacted. Where should The Rock sit? You remember. Should The Rock sit at a booth? Mm. Crowd didn't know where I was going. Should The Rock sit at a bar? Ah, oh, bigger reaction. Yeah, The Rock loves a bar because The Rock loves him some tequila. Or should The Rock sit at the head of the table? crowd that night exploded around the world exploded and just as sure as a rock has chills on his arm the world exploded because they knew after all these years they were finally getting the rock versus roman reigns the biggest wrestlemania of all time And what happens? Cody Rhodes, he wins the Royal Rumble. Fair and square, works his ass off, and he wins that Royal Rumble, baby. Yeah, he's going to WrestleMania. Yeah, good for him. Good for him. The Rock was happy. But what happened? The Rock called Cody Rhodes, had a conversation. But it was a conversation that a few have had with Cody Rhodes before. Because Cody knew the biggest match of all time was looming. The Rock talked to Cody and said, Cody, you know, you love this business. The Rock loves this business. You were born into this business. The Rock was born into this business. Roman Reigns was born into this business. The three of us born into this business. You know, Cody, you got the biggest WrestleMania main event of all time. Right here. You have an opportunity to bring this business up to places that's never been before. You can always, with all due respect, finish your story another time. You agreed. You agreed. Rocket stings. But I agree. It stings. But I'm a team player. It stings. But I want what's best for the business. Good man, good man. And then what happened? In Birmingham, Alabama, a city we selected because of its rich history and we knew we were gonna make history. It was your job, Cody, to introduce The Rock, thus setting up the biggest main event of all time. And what'd you do? You did exactly what we agreed on. Brother, you introduced The Rock and that place went crazy and The Rock came out. And he dapped you up, he pulled you in and gave you a big hug. And I whispered something in your ear. Let's put on the biggest WrestleMania of all time. 
Let's do it for the American dream. Let's do it for the soul man. And I gave you a hug, you hugged the rock back. And what'd you do, Cody? You walked out of that ring on live TV. And you turned back and you looked at the rock. And instead of looking at the rock saying, yeah, go get him. Let's make history. Instead of that, what'd you do? You gave the rock a look. And it's the same look you gave the world. Like the rock went out and ran over your goofy ass dog. That's the look you gave. Like the rock ran over your goofy ass dog. And then sometime from that moment on until Las Vegas, you changed your mind. You know what? That's no problem. You can change your mind. You have that right. And the rock accepts that. Everybody has a right to change their mind. The Rock accepts it. You changed your mind. But here's what The Rock doesn't accept. is how you did it. I'll say it again, because it's important to all the Cody crybabies and all the goofs out there and the idiots who still complain. Cody, you had a right to change your mind. You won the Royal Rumble. But what The Rock doesn't accept is how you did it. Saw you in Las Vegas. Saw you in Las Vegas, saw you backstage 20 feet away. Rock dapped you up, gave you a hug. Did you say anything to the Rock then? Hey Rock, I got something on my mind. Yeah, tell me about it. Hey Rock, I got something that's eating me up inside. Cody, go ahead, tell me about it. Let's walk over there, let's talk in private. Come and tell me about it. Did you say any of that? No, you didn't say a thing. But what'd you do? You waited until Roman Reigns walked out there and announced he's facing the Rock. Then the Rock went out there showed the entire family tree proof of the most dominant family in professional wrestling, in entertainment, and in sports in the world. And accepted Roman Reigns, accepted the challenge, blood oath, and we were going to put on the biggest WrestleMania of all time. What'd you do? Then you came out and you interrupted. Hold on. Hold on. He said it was, um, he said it was bullshit. Yeah, it was bullshit. You could think it's bullshit, brother. Not a problem. But you know where you really screwed up? It's when you talk shit about my family. All the Cody crybabies. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. Shut your mouths. You talk shit about my family. What'd you call them, Cody? It's not a family. They are nothing but lackeys, but yes men. They're goons. Then you spoke about Roman's grandfather and you spoke about my grandfather, the great high chief Peter Maivia. If your grandfather was here, if the high chief, his grandfather was here, They'd be ashamed of you. I did to you, Cody Rhodes, in that moment. What I would do to you a million times would just slap the taste right out of your mouth. And then what happened? What happened? <laughs> the rock embarrassed you in front of the world, boy. Slap the shit out of you. You had it coming. Talk shit about my family again. Said it to you then, I'll say it again. I'll say it forever. Talk shit about my family again and I'll do worse than that. But then what happened? Your new best friend. You got a new best friend. How about that? You got a new best friend in the walking clown show known as Seth Rollins. What did Seth do? The Rock slaps the shit out of you. Seth steps to the Rock. <laughs> Rock pushed him back, gave him a little love tap. Ah, 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 ah. Get back, get back, boy. You don't want any of this. The Rock doesn't know you. You don't know The Rock, but you don't want to know The Rock in that way. This is none of your business. The Rock doesn't know Seth Rollins, never said a word about Seth Rollins publicly, privately, doesn't matter. 
Doesn't matter. The rock has no idea. The rock has no idea why this man is getting in our business, but he did. And not only that, but then he just can't help himself. Like a lot of the jabronis in the locker room just can't help himself and start talking shit about the rock. Take a look. Yeah, he's going to open his mouth. He's going to run his mouth. He's going to say the same crap he's been saying for the last two decades because he can't come up with any new material. Um, but the bottom line is, and I've said it before, he's just, he's an afterthought. Mm. This is our story. It's our era. We built the last decade of WWE, this Elimination Chamber show, WrestleMania, the biggest ever. We built it without him. So he can come in, he can get what he wants, he can take his little piece, Ooh. and then he can go back to Hollywood and do his <laughs> thing. Because we got this thing, but we don't need you, big guy. <laughs> you don't need The Rock, huh? Rock, we don't need you. You don't need the rock. <laughs> if you were a little smarter, Seth, you'd realize how stupid you sound. Let the rock drop some gospel on your goofy ass. You need the rock in ways that you can't even imagine. Here's some gospel. You think when Ari Emanuel, the rock's good friend, the rock's business partner for decades, the rock's lead agent, Someone who The Rock looks looks to like a big brother. You think when he goes to sit with Netflix across from Ted Sarandos, The Rock's good buddy and business partner, sitting across from Bella Bajaria, The Rock's good friend and business partner at Netflix. You think when they're inking, when they're signing this $5 billion deal for the WWE and Netflix, do you think that Ted and Bella is saying, hey, Ari, when WWE comes to Netflix, is Seth Rollins going to be champion? Do you think that that's what they're asking? No, they're not asking that, number one, because they don't care, and number two, they don't know who in the hell you are. You know what they're asking? Hey, Ari, we'll sign this $5 billion historical deal. Never before. But one question. Where's the people's champion? One question, where is the man, The Rock himself? One question, where's the man who has the most watched film in the history of Netflix, The Rock? Where is he at in this whole thing? Ari looks at them and says, he's locked in for life. He's locked in for life. Director of the board owns everything as it relates to his name. He's locked in for life. Signed, $5 billion. So Seth Rollins, you understand now how much you need The Rock? Uh-huh. You understand now, right, boy? And you keep running your mouth. You keep running your mouth. Rock, you find some new material, Rock. Find some new material. Is that right? Okay, well, The Rock has some new material for you. How about this? Here's some, here's some new material for you, Seth Rollins. How about this? The Rock sits at the top. Director. TKO board, not WWE, but TKO, which means The Rock is the boss, which means The Rock is your boss, which means The Rock owns everything, The Rock, everything associated with The Rock, the people's champion owns it all, which means The Rock is your boss, which means Seth Rollins, if you keep running your mouth and sticking your nose in the bloodlines business, then that world title that you have around your waist, very soon, very soon, The Rock will make that title go to somebody else. Read between the lines. Yes, The Rock just blurred it. Keep running your mouth, sticking your nose in the bloodlines business. This is between The Rock and it is between Roman Reigns and Cody Rhodes. That's it. Stick your nose where it doesn't belong. The Rock guarantees you. And The Rock has built a career on doing everything he has said he's going to do. The Rock guarantees you stick your nose in our business. That world title that you have around your waist else it will go to somebody else and there's two things you could do about it Seth nothing and like it you keep sticking your nose in our business the rock and Roman reigns are gonna beat your goofy ass right back to the circus with the rest of the clowns Cody Rhodes for you the Cody cry babies for your new best friend, the walking clown emoji himself, Seth Rollins, and to your goofy ass dog, 
The Rock says this, you all are advocates of Cody finishing his story. It's so important. Cody Rhodes, you took something from The Rock. You insulted my family. You took something from The Rock. You took something from Roman Reigns. You took something from the millions and millions and millions and millions of the real fans who wanted to see the biggest WrestleMania event of all time. You took it away. You took it away. And now you're going to pay. Cody Rhodes, from the bottom of my heart, man to man, Fuck your story. Glendale, Arizona, greatness is coming. Friday Night Live, SmackDown. Dallas, Texas, greatness is coming. You are on deck, March 8th. Greatness is coming. Memphis, Tennessee, March 15th. The Rock is coming home. Fuck your story.